Welcome to The Fallen State. I'm Jesse Lee Peterson. We'll be hearing a lot about the Me Too and Time's Up movement. I have with me Emiko, a singer, songwriter, recording artist, and a creator of the I Believe You Project. Do you believe that human beings are born in a fallen state? Whoa! <laughs> what a... What a great question. Do I believe that human beings are born into a fallen into state? a fallen state? I think I personally believe that all humans are born good and that they're born purely and that they're not born into a fallen state. I think there is uh, circumstantially, especially nowadays, I think there's circumstantially immediate contact with the fallen state for sure. How one chooses to develop on their path can determine whether they go further down that road or not. Oh, okay. Are you a Christian? I am not. You're not a Christian? No. And how, where do you put yourself as re concerned of religion? Maybe I'm multi-religious, if that makes sense. No. I, I am a person who believes in faith and goodness holistically. Amazing. Uh, what is the times, what is a uh, hashtag times up? movement. What is that exactly? The experiences of sexual harassment, sexual violence, um, sexual misconduct have come to light in the media. Uh, first, as we know, it was Me Too, meaning everybody could, everybody that had this experience could say, Me Too, I also have had this experience. Uh, and that was a way of sort of signifying this mass involvement, that it had touched so many people. Um, time's up now indicates uh, a lot of different things. It indicates social change, it indicates uh, legal reform, it indicates community change, it indicates change for women's rights and human rights in a lot of ways, that the time is up. We, perpetrators have run out of time. People mm -hmm. who commit acts of sexual domestic violence, um, violence in the workplace, systematic suppression and oppression, the, your time is up. It's time to go. There's a new time now. And that time is the time of goodness and social change and lasting positive change. So the um, hashtag Me Too movement and hashtag Time Up movement is basically the same purpose? They are. The Time's Up is more of a development. So it's sort of the second phase of oh, okay. Me Too in that sense that Me Too was simply standing up and identifying and declaring, I too have had this happen to me. Right. Time's up is saying, okay, now we're, now we're getting to the phase, we're gonna take action, we're gonna activate, we're gonna do something about it. So what is the purpose of going public? All these women are coming out saying, me too, time mm -hmm. up, time's up. What is the purpose of that? What do they want? One of the things that we are working on on behalf of survivors of sexual violence and domestic violence is reform within the justice system and the law enforcement communities. So we want to build that bridge so that survivors, God forbid this happens to somebody, and they're afraid to call the police because they're going to be re-victimized in the system. They won't be believed, their communities will shun them, maybe they would even lose their job or lose their children, or worse, have somebody re-attack them out of retribution. So a lot of women have stayed silent because of all of these conditional pressures. And so what we want and what we're working actively toward on a daily basis is to not just reform the system as a whole and make it more compassionate and transparent and effective, but also change the way culturally that American society looks at sexual violence, the over-sexualization of women, especially in mainstream media, marketing, that trickles down into faith, family values, community responsibility, social awareness. And so when you say reform, you mean new laws, more laws? New laws, for sure, certain emergency actions that can be taken. 
we're looking at um, ways to create more accountability, more transparency, and more urgency when survivors come forward and they need help. The system is a very slow mechanism. Did you attend the Golden Globe Award this year? I did not. I, watched, did not. I watched it, but I did not. What did you think about that? Well, then the women dressed in black, and then Oprah got up and Gave carried her on like a black preacher. Were you like, as like, what in the world is going on as I was about it? I, I, I looked at the, the Golden Globes as an opportunity, partly as an opportunity to see, okay, let's see real change happen now. And also as a way to see if, okay, they've spoken up, they've done this, they've had this all black solidarity dress code. Great, <laughs> I'm wearing all black yeah, except my jacket, but that's because I'm from New York and that's what we do is we <laughs> wear all black in Manhattan. Did you see the hypocrisy of Hollywood that night and that, as you said earlier, they uh, sexualize men and women. Right. They create these problems, and then when these folks go, go out of uh, control, concern is that Hollywood come back and right. pretend to be the savior right. of the problem when they're right. the, really the primary cause of the right. problem. I, so did you see the hi hypocrisy in them that night? I, I saw a fair bit of um, rear end covering. Yeah. <laughs> nice way of putting it, looking over like the that. shoulder in yeah. one sense. Um, yes, that I think to anybody that, that works within the industry, it's fairly obvious. How we choose to utilize those observations is really what's important, right? People are always going to be out there walking the red carpet, being fancy, um, singing and preaching the words. But what are the actions to back it up? Yeah. And when you see real actions being backed up on a daily basis, on a consistent basis, that's where the real work and the progress is going to be made. What I thought was interesting, too, is that most of those women, they kissed up at Harvey Weinstein, they Oprah hugging him. We've seen pictures of right. that. Right, oh, yes. Harvey Weinstein is such a beautiful person. I saw Oprah, for example, with a white girl meeting with Harvey. And she was just really, you know, like she was turning over a uh, piece of meat to Harvey. Okay. And Harvey was pinching her on the shoulders. Mm -hmm. And now that this information comes out, all those women are acting like they knew nothing about it. They, that, they have their careers going now. They use Harvey for their own personal gain. And now they're turning on the person that they used. And it's been said that they knew what was going on all these years. As a woman, what do you think about women like that? That is a very, I, I, will, I will tell you um, from certain angles of my own personal experience, not with Mr. Weinstein, thank goodness, but in other circles within the entertainment industry, it has always been widely accepted that sex sells. Right. Um, it has been a difficult and quite divisive situation for women because on one hand, uh, you're absolutely right. They're, they're at least from everything I've read, because I don't have firsthand knowledge, but right. from who, people I've spoken to and things I've read, there was a fair amount of knowledge within this. And somebody in the uh, New Yorker wrote that um, Weinstein existed on a, on a network of cooperation. Right. He needed their silence to allow this to continue. So people turned a blind eye, or they thought, ooh, my job is in jeopardy. i got to feed my kids. I don't want to lose my well, job. Or they just had a personal gain for themselves, so they right. knew and didn't care as I long as they got what they wanted. I think having, having been a survivor of sexual violence and being in a, in a situation where I was involved in long-term domestic violence that affected my professional career, I can speak firsthand and say it's not that easy for women. Um, and I think that is probably true of multiple um, suppressed and oppressed groups of people. So are you saying that these women wanted what they wanted so badly? They wanted their careers, they wanted to be famous, they wanted to be number one, that that meant more to them than standing up for what is right? I think that in some cases, there is a misinformation and mis, misguiding sometimes that happens of moral agency. And what I mean by that is you, 
you work so hard. I'll, I'll give you an example, OK? I'll give you my own personal example of me, so yes. that I'm speaking of my own knowledge. So I was involved with an individual um, who ended up being very domestically violent. But on paper, this individual looked great. Great six-figure job, worked for a multinational corporation, suit and tie, totally, you know, on paper, the dream guy. And my parents had always taken issue with previous boyfriends and partners that I'd mm -hmm. had because I'm in music and sometimes we, there's some seedy characters around, you know. <laughs> um, and so for me, I stayed with this individual because it was so important to me to relieve my parents of the burden of having to worry about my choices. How old were you at the time? 29, 28, okay. 29. So you're like an adult. I was old enough to know better. Yeah. But it was so important to me that my parents um, approved in the sense that I didn't, I was willing to overlook early signs of this violent behavior. Oh, he had a bad day at work. Oh, this happened. Oh, that happened. Oh, I forgot to clean up the house today. I was busy, da da da, da. whatever it might have been. And it escalated and escalated and escalated until pretty soon I was in too deep. Would you trust any of those women who were at the Golden Globe mm -hmm. and carrying on about sexual harassment, knowing that they, they went along with it because it was like Harvey may have been using them, but it seemed as though they were using him as well. If you give me a job, I give you sex. If you make me a producer, I'll do this. Mm -hmm. It seemed like they, they're, use, they're using each other. Would you trust those women who would take advantage of him and then turn on him? Would you trust them? Personally, trust anyone that you know would turn on you once they get what they want from you. I think... Uh, and then the, they'll make, oh, you're a bad woman. You <laughs> harassed me. And now they made buku money, they're known in film, right. or whatever they wanted from you. Would you trust a woman like that? I think it would depend on the situation, and I think it would depend on the but person. But how about if you know they use you, and you were using them too, but... Well, uh, and and that, there, are, there are situations right. like that, sure. But would you trust a woman that would turn on you after she used you for her own, her own personal gain, and cause you to look like the perpetrator, the perpetrator right. to Let, the world. Okay. Would you trust that kind of person? Let me ask you this question. Trust is an interesting word because it implies a deeper relationship than what may be there. So would I continue to associate with that individual professionally because it benefited myself or my company or I knew that it would somehow mutually benefit us even though there is no trust and there is no personal uh, trust. We do this for me because I'm black and slow, and sometimes I need like yes or no answers. Okay. Would you trust a woman who you hired, and she wanted something from from you for her own personal gain? Mm -hmm. You wanted something from her, and you two use each other. And then once this woman get what she wants right. from you, she go out and turn on you. Oh. Emiko is a bad person. She sexual harassed me. And, <laughs> and now this woman got all that she wants right. from you, right. b both users. Sure. Would you trust that person ever again? No. So should we trust those women that were dressed in black, knowing, according to all the stories that we read, that they used Harvey Weinstein, and apparently he used them. Should we trust them that they are really victims, or should we believe that they have another agenda? Trust them in what sense? In like believe sense. them or trust well, them yeah, like to babysit my child? Because <laughs> belief is one thing, would trust you, is something that's a little bit more um, broad stroke. Would you bring them in your world, in your business, in your profession, and then know that they can use you to get what they want and then they'll turn on you? Would you trust them in that way? I think it would depend on the situation. But in this particular situation, knowing that they're going to, you know, take all they want from you, you know, they're going to give you all the sex or whatever you need, and then you're going to get what? Would you trust any of those women in your company knowing that they can turn on you? I might. And, and why would you might? Um, because I am a person in my professional life and in my personal life that I believe in personal connectivity. I believe in knowing more about 
situations before painting everything with a broad brush. Would they have to say, you know what, Emiko, I was wrong for what I did to those men in Hollywood. I realize now I use them and they use me. I'm sorry, would you need that from them first? Or could they just come in and fill out an application? You're like, okay, come on. I think that in my case, there would be a middle ground. There would be a middle ground. You're in keeping, fact, I know there would be a middle ground. You're eye on them, right? I would encourage open communication about concerns yeah. in the past and anything going forward um, because, specifically because if you have open communication and if you have trust and mutual respect, things like sexual harassment, misconduct, abuse in the workplace tend to happen less. They don't, they don't ever not happen because right. there's always somebody that well, wants to be a jerk. Whenever men but, and women come together, they are naturally, some men, some women won't, but when men and women come together in one place, that attraction is going to happen. Isn't that true? I uh, think so. Um, I saw the video last night. I was watching your video. Oh, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> thank you. Last November, you released a music video for your song, I Believe You. Yes. And so I want to know what caused you to create that song and where did you find those women that was in the video? Right. So I, uh, as I said, I have been dealing with the experience of sexual assault and domestic violence. Personally, right? Personally, yes. Let me ask, did you forgive the man that did that to you? Forgiveness is an interesting word to use, but I would say... Yes, I, I would put it like this. The way that I have been able to find the forgiveness is that I, whether you call it pray or meditate or think on for him every day to be guided by the higher power to a path where he can understand that what, he, what happened was incorrect and, and very wrong and that he can seek help for his own pain. Right. Because people don't aggress against other people unless there's deep, been, deep, yeah, deep pain. It happened to them. Right, exactly. Yeah. And so you forgave him? For lack of a better term, yes, Did sure. Did you tell him that? Uh, I, I, th I did actually, um, quite a while ago, I did. This guy you were living with, is that right, or working with? Uh, a little bit of both. A little bit. And so did you apologize to him for bringing the worst out of him? You know how women irritate men, they, they, <laughs> <laughs> they can be nasty, they can be cunning, and not all, not all, not all, but most. And it brings out that in men because men don't know how to deal with that when mm. it comes out of a woman. Did you apologize to him for what you done, what you did to him? I actually, I did, as oh, okay. a matter of fact. Good. Um, a lot of women won't apologize, but and you did. Go ahead. I, I no, I did, and um, it was it was an interesting opportunity because y you have to understand when you are assaulted or attacked, whether it's for your gender the color of your skin, your religion, whatever it may be, that is a hate crime. That attacker is going to aggress upon you. It does not matter if you guys have kids that are on the same baseball league and you have something right. in common. They, they are filled with hate, they're gonna do it. They don't care about anything else. There's no way that you can humanize yourself to that individual because they have an agenda. So it's important that I um, insert here to survive any sort of attack or assault, sexual or otherwise, it is not the victim's fault. And uh, it is important for all people, all people, both genders, to take personal responsibility, yes. you know? Mm, so I could have I could have been a little bit more compassionate. I could have worked with, that does not give you the right to assault me. That does not give you the right to rape. That does not give you the right to commit a racial hate so, crime or anything. But if I have done if in my heart I know that I have done everything I can to be compassionate to 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 you, right? To to communicate with you, to accept and hear your pain and you're still going to do that to me, I I couldn't have stopped it anyway. 
Do you, so do you blame your parents that you stayed because you said earlier <laughs> that you stayed with this guy because your parent had instilled this in you, you don't want to disappoint your parents. Did they make you or create you in this way where you were too weak to walk away because of them? Uh, I went through, I will admit that I went through that. I yeah, did I go through that. Yeah. Um, however, you know, now, now that I'm not 28 or 29 anymore, <laughs> um, in every human, in every adult human being's life, there is a turning point. You have to look at yourself in the mirror and say, I'm a grown person. That's right. And I need to individuate from my parents. And if my parents don't like my choice, as long as I'm able to live with my choice, that is my choice. This That's is right. this is my action. I am an individual human being. This is my responsibility. I need to take care of that. Um, so you do blame them for weakening you like that, mm, where you had to go through that? I don't know that, I don't know that blame is the right word. I, I certainly, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I remember uh, my parents and I sat down to Mexican food in my kitchen one day and I did say that to yes. them, those exact words, and my mother burst into tears, oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> and my father sat there and he said, don't give me that. Yeah, you're a right. grown. You're a grown person. I love you, that. You know, you, <laughs> you're only, he was not phased in the least. And so there's, but there is a middle ground because later my father and I had that discussion again and he said, ah, oh, I... I see why, why our approval uh, and our support is important to you. I've noticed that women today, not all, not all, but mostly liberal women, mm. they seem to be, they pretend to be tough, but yet when you see these type of movements, they are saying that they're weak. You know, they need laws and they accuse men. It's as though they don't know how or have the strength to say no to a man or to walk away. Whereas when I was growing up, mm. women were stronger. Mm. And if, if, if they didn't want to do anything with you, you knew it. You said, okay, fine. You know, uh, what happened to these women that they're so weak that they need to pass laws? They're always complaining. They're starting movements. While yet you hear them say, oh, I'm a strong woman. I am. I'm strong. I'm wonderful. I'm a, you know, it's like they're lying. A lie is in there somewhere because a strong woman or a strong person wouldn't be crying and passing laws and trying to hurt other people. They would defend themselves. They would go on with life because life offers so many challenges. Are they, are they weak or are they strong? I don't know what they are and what they want. And it's mostly liberal women, mm. feminist kind of people. Well, I, I think in, uh, in my experience firsthand with uh, connecting with a lot of survivors and supporters of survivors, we have found that it actually takes great strength to come forward to tell your story. And it, it doesn't takes, take much strength to do it that. It does. It takes strength to say, hey, guy, I don't want to have sex with you. Leave me alone. Well, it's it, a, And then you notice when they come forward with the movement, it's not just one. They got a whole bunch of women. They're still not standing alone the way a strong person would do. Wouldn't you agree? No. Oh, why not? I absolutely would not agree. If that was the case, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., in all the work that he did in equality, in compassion, and in education, would have marched on Washington alone. But that was about changing a law that prevented people based on color only. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about one-on-one -on -one interaction. In a lot of ways, though, one-on-one -on -one interaction did occur that was incorrect. There were plenty of white, privileged oppressors that took advantage of the system to continue to abuse and oppress African Americans who are great contributors of society. When did that happen and when? All throughout history. As soon as white people started going to Africa and pulling people against their will onto slave ships. That didn't happen. That's a made up lie. Uh, the blacks were sold to the Arabs. Uh, by other blacks, elitist black, rich black kings, and then they, those Arabs took them to other parts of the world and sold them. The white man didn't just go to Africa to get some Negroes. That was made up. Either way, they were sold against their will. A human being is not to be bought or sold. They're know, not but, a commodity. But it wasn't about a so-called white privilege. Male. Okay, let's substitute the word white for Arab then. No, yeah, it was That's a, fine. A, the Arabs who did it, and yes, 
maybe that was wrong, but the white man didn't do it. So likewise, but it was still, but it was still wrong. It's such though. a very interesting point you're making. Because likewise, these liberal women, they could be making up lies too, just like you thought that was the truth. They could be pushing a lie as well with a hidden agenda. Is that possible? No. And why is that? Because there's been enough unrefuted proof that has come out that sexual violence against women has systematically existed for generations. Over the last 20 years or so, mm -hmm. there have been a lot of laws passed against men to restrict them. Mm. And so now these women are like going out of control. They're slapping them, yelling at them, and they say, you can't hit me back because you're going to jail. Oh, I've heard that. Yeah. Right, and sure. they have sex with men, and then if they get angry, they hey, I just got raped. Your movement is it for the men who are being sexually abused and mentally and physically abused, or is it just for the, or is it for the women only? No, it's for everybody that is on the receiving end of sexual and domestic violence. So mm -hmm. we are open to all survivors, men, women, and children, because we understand and we know for a fact that violence doesn't know yeah. just a gender, just a race, just a religion. What would you say to men who are going through this with women? I hear it all the time. Who are experiencing... Yeah, who the are verbally going through this stuff with, with women, who are sexually going through this stuff with women. Uh, so where the women are aggressing upon the yes. men, you're saying, oh, yeah. sure. Okay, I just wanted to be clear on that. Right. Um, I would say the same thing to the men that I say to the women. Keep telling your story. Keep seeking help. Never feel, never feel weak, yeah. that there's a big stigma for men where, ah, oh, well, you let her slap you around, you're not much of a man, ha ha ha. <laughs> no, you know what? That's right. There are bad women out there. Yes. There, there are, there are bad human beings out there, period, that are just violent and awful people. There just are. So to the men, I say the same, the message is the same to any human being, man, woman, child, find somebody that does believe you, come to us. We, right. we will believe you, we will investigate your story and we will, we will help you. Find resources of education, such as your organization, right, where you can come and speak to other men who may help to amplify your voice, who can get you to the right people to get, to get you help. And should these guys, whether it's their wives or their living girlfriends mm. or whatever it might be, should they start calling the cops right away? Hey, my wife just cussed me out, cursed me out, come and get her. I had police involvement in my situation. And I can tell you that uh, police involvement is a very serious it last is. resort. Yeah. It's extraordinarily um, heavily weighted in yeah. a lot of ways. It's a lot of responsibility. Um, there's a lot of pressure on the person that calls to press charges. There's a lot of really... Yeah, I'm dealing with someone who's going through that right now. It's, she called the cops mm -hmm. on her boyfriend she now regrets it because she didn't realize that he was going to go to jail. It's a whole thing. That's yeah. right. So should men, the moment is the, wom uh, the woman become verbally abusive, mm -hmm. should he pick up the phone and call the cops and say, hey, she just verbally went off on me. Please come and get her. Or I, I think, well, I think, okay, so in that respect, I think there is, there is a moment that one has to delineate. In other words, if if a man, anybody, but in this case you're speaking about men, so I'll speak about men. If a man experiences something where his partner threatens his life and yeah. threatens to kill him or kill his children or, or threatens his, uh, to go to his office or whatever it is, that's definitely a reason to call the police. Someone is making a threat against your person, against yes. your personal well-being and your ability to live safely. That is definitely a reason to call the police. Sure, if somebody's calling you four-letter words and names and this and that, Mm, do you immediately jump and call 911? It depends on the situation. Like, has this happened multiple times and you've been living with it for weeks and days on end and somebody threw, you know, plates at your head and this and that? Yeah, I'd call the cops. Is this the first time that you've had this fight? Mm, maybe take a moment, walk away, breathe, come back, see if you can work it out. You recommend that for the woman too? If Absolutely. The manager, yeah. I, I'm running out of time here, so, and, and so much that I wanted to talk to you about. Do you consider yourself a feminist? I consider myself a human being. How about a feminist? I consider myself a human being. How about a feminist? I consider myself a human being. How about a feminist? I consider myself a human being, Jesse. How about do you consider yourself a fe I'm not asking, I can see that you're a human being, but do you consider yourself a feminist. 
It's a good, you know, it's a good question. That's something that's been asked of me quite a lot I'm recently. Sure, yeah. And I, I honestly, and I say this with, with, with all due respect to you, I don't know that I have an answer for that yet. I'm very, the I Believe You project is a fledgling project. We're very new. Somebody right. just referred to me as an activist. Somebody else uh, referred to me as, you know, being in the forefront of women's rights. And I thought, all I'm doing is <laughs> my thing. I'm just doing my thing, you know? And if I help people along the way, that's really, I want to help human beings be better. And so I'm, I'm sorry, I wish I could answer yes or no, but I, I don't, oh, okay. I don't I have an answer for that and, yet. And what is feminism? <laughs> That's an interesting question. <laughs> what is feminism? Well, what, okay, let me ask you to clarify, please. What is feminism in my book, or what is the actual definition of feminism as by a the Merriam-Webster dictionary? Because of time, a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, well, Feminism is a movement both socially and anthropologically in recent modern history, although it has existed previously throughout civilization, in many cultures, um, when whereas it's concerned for women's, women's rights. Um, whether that's equality or education or the right to work or reproductive rights, um, and that, that happens through um, social activism, through, through lawmaking, education, so on and so forth. My definition, I think a feminist in its most fundamental, just so we're clear, right. the most fundamental, simplest form is somebody that looks at a woman and goes, hey, you're cool, like you're not an object. Hey, it's really nice to meet your person. Yeah. Hey, good connecting with you. And, and the person that sees them as a human being first and as a female second. That's a very interesting statement. And yeah. so I need a short answer. Okay. I've never asked anyone this before. How does a man look at a woman and not think she is attracted and think sex? How is that possible? They just, they, they, they make a choice not to do it. But it's in the man's gene. Sure. That's what attracts the man to the woman. Sure. That doesn't mean he has to go get her, he shouldn't rape her, he shouldn't force her or anything. But right. men look at females and think, wow. Just like females look at men Absolutely. and think, wow. Sure. Right. And so you've done that, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And so what's wrong with men doing it if you and other women are looking at men in no, there's that nothing way? No, there's nothing wrong with a man. The, the issue is not a man looking a woman up and down going, mm, 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 in right. their head. Right. The issue is when the man chooses to act on that despite the woman okay. saying no. It's only if the woman says no or gives the signals, I'm not interested, and that man keeps that doing sense. it. That's not okay. But it's okay for men to look at women and go, yeah. I think any man Mama that says Mia. that they, if any Hola. man, if any man says that they don't do that right. in their head, they're probably lying. Yeah. Probably. And women too, right? Absolutely. It's yeah. a human thing. Are feminists in competition with men? Yes or no? Some of them are, some of them aren't. I got that, that is, impression for those, from those godless women at the Golden Globe Award that they were in competition with men. Some of them are, some of them aren't. Do you love men? Do I love men? Uh -huh. I, I do. You do? I do. That's a good answer. I do. And what is love? He, he, you ask great questions. <laughs> Thank you. Wow. <laughs> what is love? Mm. I think that, uh, what is human love? Like, what is love between two people? No, just what is love? I think, I think love is a characteristic of acceptance, tolerance, compassion, kindness that is far less exercised in life than it should be. When a woman accuses a man of sexual assault, Mm -hmm. Should we just take her worried at it or just hear her out but wait until the evidence presents itself? I think, well, I mean, being the founder of the I Believe You Project, our, our aim is to have belief 
be the default position for all survivors of sexual violence. Before the proof? I think that it's important that we hear them out. It is what you is not, not okay. Believe it though, right? There are countless women and men who have brought forth proof to community leaders, the system, law enforcement, whatever, and they are disbelieved regardless of the well, proof. Well, that's a different story. But just because someone says it, should we believe them just because they said it? I think it's worth reserving judgment. And what is most important at that moment, if someone comes forward with a claim or an allegation of sexual violence, the most important thing that we can do as a supporter is to listen without right. judgment, without injecting our own personal, oh, but I know that guy, man, he's cool. I just had a beer with him. He wouldn't do that. You don't know what he would do. There are serial killers that have families, right. you know? But so don't believe it or disbelieve it, just hear it out, or him or her out. The first thing is to hear them out. All right, but don't let just them, think that the other person is guilty just because that person said it. Let them have the space to speak what their experience was. Right. And then if there's an opportunity to offer help and support and the story, okay, this person needs some help, get them the help, help it, them out. But don't just believe the accuser just because they said it, right? I would say that there are enough instances where there are falsehoods yeah. that it is important to exercise a level of um, awareness, awakeness, and responsibility, but that most of the time, any allegations of sexual violence generally turn out to be true in whatever varying degrees the truth is in it. That so is that a yes or no not to just believe the person just because they said it? Is that a yes or no? Because a lot of people are going to pay attention to what you say here. I think you can do a combination of both. So my answer is yes, you should. your default position is to believe them, but there's a little asterisk with the fine print that says listen to them accept that they need your help, find out more. If this sounds like something that is really, this is what's up, right, right and nobody's blowing it out of proportion, take the next steps to help them. Would you, would you want, if someone accused, if a woman accused you, and not that you're a lesbian or anything, but if a woman accused- I didn't know I was. <laughs> no. <laughs> Did if he just woman, out me? <laughs> no, 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 no. If a woman accused you, employee accused uh -huh. you of that because she got mad at you, or whatever. Sure, reason, right, 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 right. And she went and told someone, right. would you want the hear to just hear her out, but don't make judgment of you until they get all the evidence? I think that if somebody was to accuse me of such a thing, I would like to get a phone call about it. Yeah. And I would like to be able to sit down with that person and a third party and to discuss and say, hey, you're feeling upset about this. Let's talk about it. Let's remedy this. And right? you wouldn't want to lose your job and your company just because some person accused you without proof, right? No, absolutely not. And, yeah. I, and I think the same is true. I think the same is true for men, too. It's yeah, like I mean. if, if anybody brings an allegation without something to back it up, yeah. And they're crying wolf, they're crying wolf. How if about you bring, if the woman is hidden in the darkness, the accuser is hidden in the background, but the man or woman is brought to the forefront, the accused, mm -hmm. is that fair? Is that right? Well, that depends. Did I actually do something to you? You know, I'm just saying, without me coming forth to and saying, this person accused you, right. and both people are in the forefront, so mm -hmm. you can see who they are, mm -hmm. is that fair? I think you know, a lot, I don't, they don't show a lot of women who are accused. Yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. I think that fair doesn't really have much to do with is it. Is that right? Sometimes. It is right sometimes? Sometimes. So you wouldn't mind if someone accused you of something sometimes, but you don't see your accuser, you don't confront your accuser, you can't prove that your accuser is wrong? You know, would that be fair to you? You would like that sometimes? I'm not saying that I would like, that's not what I'm saying. I'm not it, saying that would I would like it. Would it be like fair it. or right sometimes? If I had done something no, so if egregious? You haven't, you just oh, if I haven't. But no uh, one knows okay. that though. Well, if I haven't, that's another How about, story. But no one knows, it's just accused. Well, that's why we have courts of law. Back in uh, 2014, the Rolling Stone published an article alleging that a gang rape occurred at a UVA campus fraternity party. Mm -hmm. That was debunked. Uh, the Rolling Stone was ordered to pay out $1.65 million to the fraternity for defamation. And back in 2006, this was a major story, uh, three Duke lacrosse players went oh, yeah. to trial. I remember that. 
uh, after being falsely accused of raping a stripper at a party, the lacrosse players, lacrosse players were eventually cleared mm -hmm. of the charges. In 2013, a male Columbia University student was found not responsible for rape, yet accuser, uh, they call her the mattress girl. Right. Remember her yeah, carrying yeah, a yeah, mattress yeah, yeah. girl? Yes. Continue to accuse him by carrying a mattress around uh, the campus as a school project. Right. And she received course credit from the university for the project. Mm -hmm. What do you say to those stories? I would say I have mixed feelings on the mattress project, I do, because in one sense, I know for myself that I was disbelieved despite the evidence that was brought. And I've continued to speak out anyway. And so I think that if in her case and in the young gentleman student's case, if it was a case where the judicial system failed, I think she has every right to continue to speak out and, and tell her story and speak her truth. And in that sense, uh, the school can elect. But she was proven to be wrong, a lion. There are a lot of cases in history in the United States justice system where people are proved to be wrong. And in fact, that's not at all the case. It, it's an encouragement to hear you ask these questions. I think some people might get offended or upset about it, but I take it as an encouragement, in fact, to take personal responsibility as a person, as a human, not just as a woman, as a human, to educate myself, yeah. to continue education of others, to continue a dialogue so that we can work together, mm -hmm. ultimately, so that nobody is raped, nobody is assaulted, nobody gets... Uh, loses a job when they haven't done anything wrong, right? Nobody uses the system and cries wolf. And for those who actually have been victimized, that they ultimately get the help. I totally enjoyed talking with you. Final question. Yes, sir. Did you have fun? I did. <laughs> I did, actually, very much so. Well, I appreciate you coming. State. Do you love the Great White Hope? Uh, the jury's out on that one. I'm very neutral on the You know why you don't Trump. love Donald? Because you don't love your father. You can't hate your father and have love for anyone else. I'm gonna get well, you a me... logical fallacy chart. When you're presenting arguments, it's literally like nothing but like the most obtuse logical fallacies. Smoke like, on it. How would you know how I objectively feel Check about it something? Out. These I'm arguments aren't based on anything. Thanks for watching The Fallen State. We need your continued support. Donate to my nonprofit here. Subscribe and like the videos here. And tell everybody and their mama about the show.